Hello and welcome to the January 2012 edition of our online teacher feature for Kula Yoga Shalo. Today we're sitting with Tracy O'Hara and I say O'Hara, is that cool? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> O'Hara, whatever. When you start reading everything in Sanskrit, all A's become A ah sounding. <laughs> and Tracy is a Kundalini yoga teacher and um, is here to share a little bit about her path into yoga and into teaching yoga and to give you a little bit of idea of uh, what you can expect um, by coming to her class. She teaches right now at 1 p.m. on Mondays and maybe more in the future. But definitely, if you watch this soon, um, there's a couple of great upcoming workshops as well that you can read about on our website, too, with Tracy. So thank you so much for being here and doing this and sitting in front of a camera. <laughs> Could yeah. you tell us a little bit about just your background in, in terms of how yeah, you I'd came to, to yoga? Yeah, yeah Satnam. Thank you, Scott, for this opportunity. Um, yeah, I, uh, I got into yoga about three and a half years ago, kind of on the back end of it. I was always a runner. I've been running since I'm 12. And weightlifting, body sculpting, that was my, uh, my thing. Yoga was not my thing. <laughs> Wasn't fast enough, too slow for me. But I got into the yoga because I had suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder, severe post-traumatic stress disorder, and an eating disorder. And I could not find relief from any of these through therapists and on and on. And um, through the back end, I started to meditate. And through meditation, I fell into a yoga training. And in the yoga training, still didn't understand anything about yoga and uh, I did a kundalini class and once I did that kundalini class everything just, for me at the end of that class everything fell into place um, I just knew that this was going to be my journey in teaching people how to self heal to heal organically without meds and um, it's almost a self therapy um, I'm four years into it, and I do not suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder any longer, nor do I suffer from an eating disorder and other things that have bothered me, anxiety, and I'm not on any meds, but I don't promote that. Um, I love Kundalini because obviously it has saved my life. It's given me a life. And I love it that it's a householder's yoga, that anybody can do it. Uh, I've taught from the age of 5 to 90. Um, you do not have to be flexible. You can sit in a chair. I have many students that just sit in a chair and they can still get the full benefits of the Kundalini rising. Um, we change frequencies in Kundalini. We, we elevate in Kundalini. And in probably about five minutes you can feel a huge transformation. So if you're looking for transformation, a deep transformation in life, um, I really, really suggest that you just try one class and see what you feel. It's different than Hatha, but Hatha, you know, has its own great properties to it. And I am just so blessed that Yogi Bhajan bought this, brought this to this country about 40 plus years ago, the technology. And I feel so blessed to be able to share this at Kula. I love Kula because they teach on donation and that's a big deal for me because I give this, this gift was so freely given to me that I feel such a passion to give it to others. And that a studio stands on donation is to me so beautiful because I believe that everybody should have the opportunity to do yoga, self, organic therapy almost, getting deeper within oneself to be able to elevate and become the very best that they can possibly become. Can you describe a little bit about the distinction between asanas and kriyas and just the format of a kundalini class? And oh yeah, sure. The kundalini format, it's synchronized and it's, we go from an opening mantra to postures. We use postures that are repetitious movements. We're tapping into the glands. Um, to tap into the endocrine system, glandular system, to balance out the hormones. Um, and then we, we use mantra. Mantra is very, very effective and powerful for opening up the higher glands and for elevating, for developing a neutral mind, which is very powerful. If you have a lot of negativity in your life, you have depression in your life, the mantras are really powerful to 
dissipate the negativity, to open up um, and feel much happier, much freer, uh, relief from negativity. Beautiful. And it, it seems um, that while the practice is so accessible to everybody, that it, it also seems even to me more important in practicing Kundalini with a teacher than, you know, than having basically a hot to home practice seems a little safer, but just due to the potency of Kundalini, can you talk a little bit about just the necessity of uh, at least, a, you know, learning yeah, the Kriyas properly? That's a great point. Um, yeah, Kundalini should be through guidance. You should have a certified teacher because there are aspects to it that you may lose, um, I don't want to say control, but you need to be in a controlled environment. You need to have a teacher know how to guide you through the asanas, the pranas, the pranas are important, the breathing techniques, and the raising of the energy. Because the raising of the energy can sometimes elevate, and you do need somebody that's certified that knows how to bring that the energy back down mm -hmm. and that is very important I'm glad you brought that up because that's yeah and the other thing I think about with it is just um, to open up more people to it that are looking yeah. for physically challenging practices because we are, are so inundated in vinyasa based practices in the West that when we think about I want to do something really vigorous and energizing we we sometimes just gravitate in that direction and forget that here's this amazing, sacred, powerful practice in Kundalini that is, you know, for me has been even more challenging um, physically. So it, it's important, I think, to mention that it is, you know, a very physically stimulating practice too. It is. That you're absolutely right. That it kind of gets overshadowed by uh, Hatha. Um, people think that um, we're not. You, we're not using anything strenuous. We're not doing anything strenuous in the class. And I got to tell you, it's a full workout. Yeah, it's intense. Because we're working through a mental block. And we will do a position for two to three minutes. Everything is always timed. Mm -hmm. It can go from two, three, seven, eleven to thirty-one and on. But um, mostly in my practices, we, we maintain a two to three minute. And you're holding that posture. You're moving that posture for two mm -hmm. minutes. So it's actually very challenging because the mind. you're challenging the mind That's along right. with the physical uh, aspect of the body and that together is so you, you get such a feel of accomplishment when you work through that and you feel the elevation the resting period is just as important as the um, the asana part because the resting period is where you integrate the energy and feel the flow and then you feel the elevation the rising of the kundalini and you work through the chakras you, you break through those boundaries, those blockages of the chakras, and you elevate up. The last thing, because we just have about a minute left, is what would you like to share with people watching this, just about yoga in general and coming to the coming to the mat and here in the West at this day and this age, and based on your experience and you know the knowledge that you've accrued over your practice? Oh, great question. Like I said, I was a runner, weightlifter, hardcore, and this practice has brought into my life such a, a heartfelt sense of peace, a sense of who I am. Um, it's helped me to lessen the materialistic, the materials in my life and find out truly what is important in this journey on this planet. Cause our birthright, as Yogi Bhajan said, is to be happy and healthy. And I have found within, through yoga, that I am enough in this journey. Satnam, thank you. Thank you, Scott, for this beautiful journey in Kula Shala Yoga. Thank you, thank you.